good afternoon. Thank you for coming after lunch. That's the following speakers attract attention. Well, very quickly, quick reminder, Crypto Network Theater, contact details, Twitter, hashtag, Telegram, etc., etc., etc. Quick reminder of sponsors. Thanks to Amazon, Gold Sponsors, Sandbox AQ, AP Plus Labs, Inetum, GFT, and Prowler. And with us from the Inetum side, as I was commenting this morning, they were one of the first sponsors. Uh, so thank you very much for supporting us and making all this feasible that we are enjoying. And now it is the turn of our next speakers. And I'm sure that the talk is going to be very well received. You can introduce yourselves and whatever. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon, first of all. Thank you very much for coming after the break and after lunch. We know it's a little bit strange hours, but OK. We are going to present a talk where we are going to talk mostly about Parpel team exercises, OK? How an organization can perform both blue and red attacks learn from them, okay? We're going to tell the story of how the created the Parpel team at Enidum and how, what we do and how we put it together, okay? A brief introduction of the company, Inetum, a multinational service company in many countries, and among them we have a cybersecurity team. Countries, and among them we have a fairly large cybersecurity team. But what we are dealing with is the Parpel team. Parpel team. In general, let's introduce both Lucas and me. I am Ire, Hacking Team Manager at Inetum. And Lucas, I'll pass the turn to you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. Uh, basically, as my colleague Jere said, we are going to tell a little bit of a story of how the Parpel team arises in Inetum, what is at least challenging about it within the organizations, and how we see the role of the blue team and the red team within the organization and within our structure, and the lessons learned that we have taken throughout these exercises. Well, as Jirei said, Inetam is a technology services company, basically, in our cyber unit. We have two main focuses. On the one hand, what is the SOC, and on the other hand, the hacking team. Usually, we offer different types of services, monitoring, dissident response, intelligence, hunts, threats in what is the SOC, but on the hacking team side, all the more offensive part, right? Ethical hacking, security technical office services, forensics, audits, right? And so far, right? Until a while ago, we were working independently. Obviously, we knew each other. We knew we were colleagues. We understood the environment in which each of us worked. But we were never given the opportunity to work in a common environment. And well, at one point, the opportunity arose, right? And from that moment on, we started to think a little bit about, well, how we can somehow join efforts of both teams for a common goal, right? That an organization benefits from this synergy, right? And that's where the idea of proposing the Purple Team exercises was born, right? As a continuous improvement process. Now, this may sound a bit trite, right? Because all of us here know what the Purple Team is. But I don't know if everyone realizes that it is not so simple to carry it out, right? It has a complexity for the organizations. In order for it to be a successful exercise and not to be seen as a competition between both teams, there has to be a value bet and a common objective. And it has to be well sponsored and well understood, especially by the main actors, right? So um, that is also a little bit uh, what we are here to tell about this challenge. Why did we choose Purple, right, as a process of continuous improvement? Well, because we understand that uh, it's a good way to measure the security posture, right? The protection posture, what prevention measures, how are the performance measures that my organization has in place today, and to be able to go as far as you would like to go, right? We are not just talking about whether or not the blue team detects or does not detect or responds or blocks or contains. We are also talking about understanding how these procedures work for different areas of our organization, understanding how they react to the simulation of an attack, right? And uh, it's something that doesn't always take place. And uh, it's a good measure to evaluate, to understand what the trend is. 
Obviously, as we're going to see a little bit later on with just one exercise that we do, we're not really going to understand the posture. This has to be an ongoing process. It has to be several iterations. We have to understand what it is that we want to measure. And based on the trend that we evaluate, we are going to really understand where our organization is and how we can help to evolve it. On the other hand, we can also measure hacking capabilities, right? I mean, I think today all organizations understand what hacking is, the importance of performing offensive activities within the infrastructure, right? Either to discover threats that today are not having visibility within the organization, either to perhaps sponsor such a security project that is costing the board of directors interest. But beyond that, it is also a way to put hacking into the security strategy, isn't it? and strengthen its presence, that there is a much stronger investment by the organization in all offensive activities. We're also going to assess how capable we are of detecting threats that are part of this exercise, right? We're going to be able to understand how efficient we are at detection, as well as at the end of each exercise, we're going to learn from them what things we see that we're strong on, what things we have to be able to improve on. And finally, the response part, what capacity we have to respond. And I'm not just talking about the containment or blocking response playbooks to a potential threat. I'm talking about how my organization reacts to these security incidents that we are looking to provoke, okay? And it's because of these four aspects that we understand that purpose approach can add significant value to an organization's security strategy. However, How do we put all this into practice? I mean, how do we make all this story that sounds so nice? And you can see, let's say, you can see the strengths that your security strategy can have in an organization. How do we arrange them so that in the end, it has the expected result? Well, a little bit like I said before, it's a continuous improvement process. This implies that you are not going to achieve it in one iteration. It has to be several, okay? It is a continuous process in which there have to be different stages. Among them, there has to be a cooperation of the teams. So there has to be a coordination and an organization, okay? To understand who are the ones who, on the one hand, are going to define the objective, the scope, who will participate, what are the results that we are going to want to evaluate at the end, right? In other words, what do we want to measure throughout the exercise that we believe will help us to understand the current situation and what will help us to strengthen it? And finally, some premises, right? Which obviously may sound a bit trite, but it is the reality. We can't necessarily condition what the red team does. We need to let the red team in that offensive part have freedom of action. Yes, we can propose a little bit the objective that we are going to look for in that offense, but we cannot condition the stage by stage that the team is going to do, okay? In order to evaluate the exercise correctly, we must give them freedom. And on the other hand, on the blue team side, we can't put the blue team team in an alarmist situation either, whereby they understand that while the parpel is being carried out, any alert that comes up that day or that week or at that moment are all considered critical because we want to give the best result. Why can't we do that? Well, because it's not the normal scenario, okay? There has to be a normal scenario where the blue team is able to deal with incidents as they often do, okay? Not being overly harsh for whatever threat it presents, but following the procedures and protocols that are agreed upon, okay? And finally, which this is something that I understand, we all understand, which is the collaboration of both teams at the end of the day is what's going to add value to the security strategy at the end of the whole exercise, okay? Okay, earlier we talked about defining within the scope objective, its coordination and organization, right? Defining who's going to be involved. Well, generally the roles that are usually involved, okay? And that have to be well focused, range from the CEO, the CTO, the KISO, right? Each one within their role is going to be a stakeholder or is going to be a sponsor, right? On the CISO side, for example, he should be the first promoter, right? The main sponsor is the one who should be the main stakeholder in this going forward, and that the results obtained will help him to improve his security strategy. 
the role of the CISO should be present both in the definition of objectives and in the final evaluation of each iteration. And then, of course, we have the hacking team, right? And from the SOCI that they also, for example, what we do on our side is we make available, okay? And we prepare our team to act accordingly, okay? One of the important steps in this whole process is documentation. So for example, while the blue team does not have to be alarmist about this exercise, it is true that we need to have a presence within the blue team that allows us to document the whole process. So on the SOC side, we need to understand with whom and which participants are gonna have partial or full information from this exercise, okay? And the same with the hacking team. Of course, within this white team, right, which is the team formed to organize it, there will be the CISO, the hacking manager, so to speak, the SOC manager, right? Could it be the CEO or the CTO? Maybe not, but it is important that they guarantee the consent of these exercises because in the end, they are going to be carried out on the structure, on the organizational infrastructure, right? Okay, scope and objectives, okay? First scope. Well, where is, what is the environment in which we want to run these tests? It's a cloud environment, it's a prem environment, it's a hybrid environment, it's a particular application, right? It's a solution that we want to test, that we're launching production and we want to evaluate it. Well, you have to see if, you have to understand what is the scope that the CISO has within their priorities, okay? And which one is the one that has above the others that he is proposing to us in each iteration. But within that, within the scope, and in addition to identifying the personnel, as we said before, we have the most important thing, the objective. That the objective, while the objective is always going to be to assess the maturity of an organization's security posture, okay? We can have the objectives of understanding how granular we want to be in the selection of the type of attack that we're going to do, always looking at the premise that we said earlier, right? To the red team, for the execution of the steps to carry out the offense, we have to identify which indicators we are going to want to measure throughout the exercise, which will allow us to evaluate at the end of each iteration how this exercise has been, where I can have greater strengths and where I have weaknesses that I should improve, right? What are the findings? So if we go to the indicators part, we are going to have, as I said at some point, very interesting to measure throughout the whole cycle is the trend, okay? What is my maturity in each of the iterations and how does it vary over time, right? What are the associated risks? Obviously, as I said before, one iteration is not going to give me much result, but if I manage to do this exercise as something frequent within my security strategy, then with several iterations, the results are going to be in sight and obviously they are going to help us to make decisions, which is at the end what we wanna do, right? I mean, it's a good way to measure that detection efficiency and understand if we're being mature enough to detect these types of persistent attack simulations or not, right? And why not? The times associated with each activity, okay? That in the end, the associated times are important because we all know that the longer the window of time in which we don't react, the more possibility we are giving to a possible attacker to deploy his actions. Thank you very much, Lucas. Well, as Lucas has explained very well, this is the theory of what the purple team is, but then we have to put this theory into practice, okay? What are the first steps we have to take into account? First of all, to elaborate a white team. In this case also, as Lucas said, in Ethan's white team is formed by the hacking team manager who is me. Lucas and the CSO and an IT person. Why? Because the IT person is also going to help us to have visibility of what is being done and is also the also interested in what are the objectives? The main one is to improve the security and efficiency of our security mechanisms. 
improve network security, improve the procedures we have if the SIM is working well, if the alerts are generated properly. As for Red Team, whether we proceed to do things right or not, and so on. Also, we usually report potential problems that we are seeing. An alert is not generated properly. Our payloads are failing for whatever situation. We don't know. That's what it's all about, okay? Getting a lot more information. And how do we do that? By conducting and designing Purple Team exercises. Uh, we've given two examples, okay? As you can see that we've done in our own flesh, so to speak. The first example was something very basic, is to know and evaluate how we were. What was our ability to react? In this case, the red team exercise, sorry, purple team, had two objectives. On the one hand, the red team objective, which was to perform our internal pen test within the organization, and a primary objective, which was to execute code on one of our DCs. Uh, what was the blue team's objective? The blue team's objective was to detect that remote code execution, I need to know, and detect it and block us, okay? Block us on the red team side. And then, well, obviously you always have to measure some time, how long it took to execute the attack, how long it took us to detect it, how effective the use cases we have had have been if the blue team has been successful, if there have been problems, and so on. Well, the execution of the first exercise, because this is the first exercise, the execution of the first exercise, because we tested this, well, we started with the red team. The red team had the order to do an internal pen test. This internal pen test then consisted of, as we said, executing a remote code on a DC, okay? And DCs are fine, no? so we were testing other types of servers, and we found a server, a little bit weird, so to speak, that had a vulnerability and an exploit associated with that vulnerability, okay? We used Metasploit because what we wanted to know was whether we could detect it, we couldn't detect it, etc. We had a session. We did a critical because we had a system account. And it just so happened that there was an administrator account inside. We ran a Mimikat. We found administrator credentials and so on. Well, because we wanted to make noise too, we ran an RDP with the credentials. We ran the WAMI and nothing. And we ran and did well on our red team side. But on the blue team side, they did well too. In this case, why? Because at the moment we ran the WAMI, they stopped us dead in our tracks. That is, they took away the RDP, they blocked the attack, they blocked the user momentarily. And then the procedure of generating alert, escalating, and so on, they also did it right. So they blocked us and reported us, and it was very good, this exercise. The second example also, we are going to show you two examples. The second example consisted of, since we have seen the internal part, let's see how we behave externally, okay? These exercises can be done in any company. They are simple exercises. Then there are other types of exercises that can be much more elaborate, but these can be done in any company. It is no problem to do them. And in this exercise, what we wanted to see is how both the red team and the blue team acted in cases of external assets, in this case, right? We have a number of assets on the internet where we have to log in with a username and password. And the red team's objective was to know how these forms were, how those forms were, if they could be given away, if they could be attacked, etc. Blue team, likewise, the objective was to detect it, and in our case, to block the IPs of the red team, to block the red team's IPs. Okay, that was it. That's it. And in the execution of the second exercise, well, this time the red team, each one from home with their IPs, from the internet, we make an enumeration of all the assets that we have in Initom uh, with user login and password, and what we decided to do was, in this case, a horizontal brute force. As you know, a horizontal brute force, we have a list of users, possible users of Initom. We use only one password, and we rotate the user, and we are testing vulnerable or very basic passwords, okay? 
uh, as you can see here in the burp intruder we saw some cases that were vulnerable okay what with a basic password we were able to access certain assets with their accounts the blue team noticed obviously said there was something fishy going on here we have to stop it if they blocked our IPs so the blue team one here too I mean we Thank all you. won here actually this is an important part isn't it because in the end we're all left with the message that okay it looks like both teams won something but in reality it's always the organization that loses right because if you think about it all the time it took the blue team to detect and all the freedom that the red team had to get part of the credentials right even in the first example too where they got a key on the internal network with administrative privileges well you expose yourself too much don't you so this is the most important part of the purple team the lessons learned what happens at the end right no okay you go on you go on yeah 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 but well you said it phenomenally well lucas in other words here in reality we both win and above all the organization wins which is also a leg well come on it's the most important leg in this type of attack why we always have to evaluate after an exercise right both the red team and the blue team as well as the company itself have to evaluate what is right what is wrong what is not right what is good what is bad and what can be improved right in the case of red team in these two exercises what did we have to improve or what did we see and what did we know that we could we could improve for the next ones we saw that the very basic attacks that blue team did have localized and that we would have to do more elaborate attacks okay and in the case of blue team we just calibrated some uh, alerts so that they would go off a little faster practically and designed some reinforcement rules to help these first ones help these first ones that was it but the most important thing I think here is the internal network version of the company's assets okay these exercises give us a lot of visibility into what assets we were exposed to what assets were exposed to us for example the first server that we attacked was not in the CMDB that asset was not known to exist therefore it is very good to to give the company visibility into what assets you have we fight shadow IT right and then it also encourages us to have new security elements new mechanisms mechanisms to make it more difficult for us to do our jobs and people are given people are given facilities so that the company does not have any problems in this case the implementation of the double authentication factor and the use of captchas are being promoted and finally and as conclusions Lucas well just to finish okay the conclusions that we were left with from the purple exercises that we did okay we are obviously going to continue with them and we hope that as we get more practice and more rhythm okay to be able to propose and show much cooler more interesting things okay and with a different degree of depth because obviously there is something of confidentiality that we cannot tell right but well what we wanted to present here and invite everyone to do is to bet again on purple which is an exercise that can be done that even though there may be some complexity in the organizations to carry it out because the blue team and the red team always face each other always sit on opposite sides they can work together for a common goal okay so mm, the conclusions kind of go hand in hand with that almost always in organizational strategies in the security posture you always tend to see offense and defense separately and the purple team gives us a chance to see how these teams start to intertwine right how they begin to have a union a cohesion right and to have to work as silos as maybe happens to us a little bit right from exchanging information but information about things that seemed interesting to us not necessarily information that has a purpose for the organization we started to exchange types of information that we obtained within the individual exercises that we did which in the end give us an added value to each one of the teams so what we understand is that these purple team exercises in addition to bringing the teams closer together allow us to set common objectives right and that even though we used to have a continuous improvement right a continuous improvement process this gives it an evolution and finally just to say what we are trying to emphasize right 
a little bit that the synergies between the teams is what ends up giving this added value in the exercise so that the organizational position improves a little bit more in each iteration. We will continue to improve in the next exercises. And thank, thank you, you all very much. much. Questions? <laughs> I am breaking a word I said before. Stay with this number, number five. Don't forget the number. It will help you at the end of the day. But it was Questions? not necessary. I am breaking a word I said In before. In fact, they Stay told this me number, five, that they have so closed that you do not the room. It. Don't forget it. Because the okay. capacity has to be met. It was necessary. But it is, I mean, it because was I had full tricks to, to fill it. But it questions? was necessary. There's a question. Yes. Look, did yes. I have any tricks to fill All the question? In fact, I question. have been told My that they have Sergio. closed the room. I promise thank you for the explanation the of this. But it is full to capacity. The question questions? about the red beam structure. I have seen that you include the analysis part we have, yes, by the center minutes. of the red beam. Questions? I would like Please to know what the is the benefit for well, the sure, decision you don't have a to choice, include this. Questions? It is a very good question. Ah. Over there. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Sergio, and I promise you, thank you for the explanation of this. And I would like to ask you about the structure of the red team. I have seen that you include the edge analysis part within the red team. And I would like to ask you, what is the benefit of including this? It is a very, very good and question. Thank you very much for the question. Have to do a forensic or when we have to do an it's interesting that forensics machine. especially we also see comes up a lot in the blue team, doesn't it? Is it a part or can it even be an outside part between blue team and red team or in a different department? But we include, first of all, for knowledge because in the red team we also we have, have forensic there, knowledge. For knowledge and also when we have to do an investigation on a machine we also see if there might be vulnerabilities in the machine because he can give you another different vision. For example, there are artifacts that cyber We also see if there may be vulnerabilities in that server that, that they can understand what for steps example, have been taken to breach, well, to execute a ransomware, example, we to have an information leak, etc. We have there, I tell you, for knowledge, with the gifts. but it is also very interesting been before, to have a forensic the best expert question inside gets a network a radio, team and the worst because question, he can give you I'm another different you vision. That for example, there are artifacts okay? that cyber criminals use no, to enumerate that is not in map. Up. We have two minutes for example, or so for questions. There is a famous tool called NetScan, All which, for good. example, Something we found it fail. inside a machine. Too good. A mock question upstairs to see if we're attentive. It gives you another view. It seems to me that Yes. Thank you very much. To you. Thank you very much. Yes, they're inside the white team. Question? In yeah. fact, we have a person within our exercises where we tell them We've made a change with the we are going to do this, we if are you going haven't to been do before, that. The best question and gets they a radio. Come with us to and the worst question, as well. I'm going to give you that so commitment. Yes, a IT Chakura. also collaborates okay. because then you IT choose. is the biggest You'll make a friend and an enemy. Okay. No, because it's with exercises. Chakoda. In this case, the radio doesn't it matter, does it? strengthen the company. To have more or knowledge can we give about two the things company. to the same person? It's an active Any situation more that maybe Blue I've Team been or laughing. Team has. But so they are part of the exercise, part of the execution and the discovery. Question. I am one of those who we have believe two minutes. that the Red Team should be outsourced. Also for questions. Should Timing's be good, right? Company. All good. You're not going to challenge us Because our that. colleagues at the end of the day, uh, all right, if you not. are really annoying them, you are annoying their work. And we little bit with the question. Well, I don't know. You colleague. missed the question. So this is a bit out of line. And then also, because when you have an outsourced employee, a mock question upstairs to see if we're paying attention, and it's you reward him even more. It seems to have fallen out. The objectives for the company are Isn't better. There? Uh, so what do you think in this case? Hey, first of all, thank you very much. Look, you reminded me of Roman saying that IT is to blame, and I tell you because I ask you. I was surprised that you include in IT the protection part, and that you do not invite them to do an exercise of this type. Do you really do not invite them? I understand that they have little to do, they have the measures already in place, but isn't it a way to make them feel part of an exercise like this? Yes, they are part of the white team. In fact, we have a person in our exercises where we tell them, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, and they come with us to certain meetings. Certain meetings? So yes, IT also collaborates because IT is the biggest beneficiary of us doing the Parpel team exercises in this case. It helps us to strengthen the company, to have more knowledge about the company. Thank you.
IT collaborates a lot from the beginning, doesn't it? From the establishment of objectives and at the end in the lessons learned, right? Because it is also important that they have visibility of at the end, what has happened at the end of the year, what are the indicators and the things that need to be improved. But at the beginning and at the end, they are. Then in the execution of the exercise as such, right? It is more complicated for them to have the active participation that perhaps the blue team or the red team has, but they are part of the exercise. The exercise is not only the execution of the offense and the detection, huh? The exercise is everything. That's it. Plus very fast. We have the choice, don't we? Yeah, at least you think. Don't we? Come on, come on. Come on, let's go. Some people win a radio. Hello, welcome. Thanks, back. good talk. Oh, there it is. That is the great challenge of purple, isn't it? That's why we were saying that we're talking about something so trite and so well known by everybody that in the end we don't see that it has so much place in the security strategy of organizations. Precisely because of that, because the organization itself tends to have outsourced the most offensive part, right? It tends to have, perhaps depending on the length or the size or the possibilities of the organization, a larger or smaller blue team, and it tends to outsource another part as well, okay? And the truth is that the challenge is that at the end of the day, you have two teams that are not colleagues, okay? They're colleagues, but it's very difficult to force the purple team to give the benefit. Because in the end, for the blue team, there's almost always this notion of saying, wow, they're going to make a red team. Whatever comes this day, whatever it is, we treat it all as critical. Because whatever it is, we have to detect it. Because if we don't, it leaves me exposed. And that's the wrong message. Because what the purple team is looking for is just the opposite. It's to add synergies. Hopefully the red team will find something, hopefully they can exploit it, hopefully they can move forward, hopefully I will have the tools to measure my efficiency in detection. But what I know is that at the end of the iteration or at the end of the exercises that we do, the blue team is the main beneficiary because at the end you're going to be able to leverage or more tools or better calibrate your detection rules, okay? Or maybe, I don't know, a lot of times it happens that we are very conditioned to what we ingest, okay? That we can monitor within a shock. And a lot of times, it's a good approach to say, look, wow, this happened, okay? I can detect it, but I need to ingest this. I need to work. I need to design this. I need to work with these tools, okay? So it's a good way to leverage and sponsor solutions, resources, okay? I And also, you also have to have a focus on the objective, because my objective as a network team is that my blue team to protect my company well. My objective is not, well, I'll just come in and that's it. No, my objective is to say, look, I've arrived, I've arrived here, and the defenses have to be this, 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 and this, and it's my company. It's also how you feel your colors. In other words, a subcontracted network team company, it's going, to go, it's going to go like grasshoppers. They come, they eat, they leave, that's it. It is also true that with the market as it is today, it is difficult to pretend to have an internal hacking team, isn't it? And to keep it for a long period within your organization. I mean, that's true, isn't it? That's why generally people are outsourced. But, well, that doesn't take away from the fact that the purple is still there. It's something that we can look for and that we should propose to do, right? Despite the challenges that we see ahead. Well, we'll leave it here. The radio for who? One? For the first one and the shell for the last one, which has been difficult. Okay, it was like this. 